Why are we talking about the general data protection regulation, which was basically set up by the European Union? Well, there are reasons why. Because if you are running a business, and that business will interact with any company or citizen of the United, I mean, the European Union, then you need to abide. I'm not your lawyer, and let me make this disclaimer. I am not your lawyer, so I'm not giving you legal advice. If you wanna get legal advice, go to your lawyer, all right? The reason why I'm talking about this particular law is because any company that will be found to be non-compliant, okay, is not gonna put the blame on the lawyers that they are not compliant. The blame is gonna go on IT professionals. And this program, the digital economy and innovation, is basically a program that looks at the digital lifestyles, both of companies and of people. So this law is basically a law which digital implementers, people who are living in the digital world, doing business, using digital technology, they have to know this. You can't escape from this. You see what I mean? I know some people are saying, no, but this is Zambia. Yes, it is Zambia. And you know what? You have to know something. Zambian companies do do business with citizens of the European Union. We do do business with companies in the European Union. And if we're gonna do anything, any business with the European Union, then we must, I didn't say we should, I said we must conform to the general data protection regulation. All right? Now, let me explain a few things about this general data protection regulation. There are six principles that we should, we should understand, okay? One, data must be collected for specific and explicit purposes. Web designers, you've got contact forms on your websites, right? Now, when someone tries to contact you through the contact forms, okay, you will collect that data. And you need to understand that when you collect that data, only use it for the specific purpose that you are engaging with that particular person who is trying to contact you, all right? Well, the second principle is that data must be accurate and maintained. It must be accurate and maintained, all right? Meaning that even the way you keep your data, you need to have very good cyber hygiene in how you keep your data. We'll come to that later, okay? The third principle, data retained only for how long it is needed. Meaning that if you cease to do business with that particular company or that particular person from the European Union, you need to delete their details. Because you only have to keep data for how long you need it. That's all. Four, data must be processed lawfully, transparently, and fairly. Data must be what? Processed lawfully, transparently, and fairly. All right? Meaning that if, for example, you are a tour operator operating in Zambia, and some tourists book for a tour to go and tour South Africa, then upon reaching South Africa, they discover that there is no Victoria Falls there. The Victoria Falls is actually in Zambia, and they are to come to Zambia. That tour operator in South Africa, we need to forward the names of the people who are coming to Zambia so that you can receive them. You know what I'm saying? But meanwhile, they may not know you as a tour operator here in Zambia. They will only know the tour operator who is in South Africa. So if you're gonna get that data from South Africa into Zambia, then you need to be GDPR compliant. 
meaning that that particular company that's forwarding the tourists to you so that they can come and see the Victoria Falls, that company also needs to be GDPR compliant. And they have to tell you that you must be GDPR compliant for you to receive these tourists because they are coming from the European Union. And if you ignore that, <laughs> it ain't gonna be good for you. Now, um, let's look at the other principle. Data must be processed securely and you must be able to prove this. You get me? Meaning that if someone from the European Union gives you a call and asks you that how do you keep our information, you should be able to prove that you keep that information securely. It's not just a matter of everything is on the laptop, nobody touches that laptop. Okay, tomorrow that laptop could be stolen. And if that laptop is stolen, there are many ways of reading information that's on the laptop. If your emails are stored in um, a PST file, for example, that PST file can be read by any other email client. And they'll be able to know who you talk to and what to talk to them about. So you have to keep your data secure. I know that GDPR is a very big topic. I mean, if you want me to explain more details about GDPR to you, then you're gonna have to hire me, okay? And it will be a paid service. All right. Now, the sixth principle is that data held must be adequate, relevant, and limited to what is needed, okay? Data held must be relevant and limited to what is needed. Adequate, relevant, and limited to what is needed. Meaning you don't pick information that you will not need. Okay? You only pick information that you need. Okay? Now, these six principles of the general data protection regulation are very important for a number of companies in Zambia to understand. For example, if you are a non-governmental organization, an NGO, that looks for funding from the EU, you need to be GDPR compliant. If you are a hotel and you deal with citizens of the European Union, you need to be GDPR compliant. All right? If you are a tour operator, if you are a hospital, if you are an exporter, if you are an importer, even if you just import cars, oh, we just import cars, yes, you need to be GDPR compliant. All right? To be GDPR compliant is actually a very, very technical issue, okay? You need to have people who understand what encryption is, what the right encryption algorithm is, what good cyber hygiene is, okay? Now, I know, especially banks, you're gonna be like, but we do carry out effective risk management practices. Well, that's cool. Which risk management framework do you use? I'm using ISO 27001. I know it's an expensive framework, but some of the banks are actually using that. Are using COVID framework, all right? Which framework are you using? Okay, there's a number of cybersecurity uh, risk management frameworks out there, okay? And there's even free ones, okay? Which brings me to this issue. How does a company, like for example, a small business, okay? How do they know this is the right cybersecurity framework that we should use or not? You have to consult, all right? That is an IT security issue, okay? You can call ZICTA. That's, as far as I know, the regulatory body for information technology. So you can call them. They'll give you advice. You see what I'm saying? You can call. I'm not saying you call me, because me, I'll charge you. All right? So you can call ZICTA. They will help you. OK? Now, if you are an organization and you've never had 
a risk management audit, an IT security risk management audit, you need to start thinking of having one because it's so important for you to be compliant with the general data protection regulation you need to be carrying out effective risk management without that you will be found out of compliance and you know what the fees are the charges is 20 million united states dollars should you be found wanting the general data protection regulation set up by the european union puts the rights of privacy into the hands of the citizens, okay? Meaning that citizens of the European Union, okay, have now got privacy as their fundamental right. It's their fundamental human right. Meaning that anytime they can just call and say, what data do you have about me? Okay? And you're supposed to answer within one month if they call you. If you are hacked, you're supposed to inform them within 72 hours. If they don't get informed within 72 hours that you've been hacked, they'll take you to court. And when they take you to court, it's a matter of them just complaining to their authority right there in the European Union. And that authority in the European Union is gonna come after you right here in Zambia, all right? And should you be found that you never, you were never compliant with the general data protection regulation, you will be charged 20 million, well, it's not like you will be charged 20 million dollars, but you will be charged up to 20 million euros, or 4% of your global earnings, whichever is high, all right? That's, that's the maximum penalty, 20 million euros, all right? Or 4% of your global earnings. That's basically breaking you up. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so the best way is to stay compliant, all right? The best way is to stay compliant, okay? Now, like I said, this is a 200-page document with 99 articles, all right? And this GDPR is not, is not just something which lawyers should read, because lawyers are not, even the ones who implement the GDPR, it's the IT professionals, okay? If there is a data breach, it's not the lawyers who are gonna be answerable to it, it's us, the IT professionals. And that is why we're discussing this on this program, all right? Now, of course, GDPR implementation and compliance requires a collaborative effort, okay? Managers, lawyers, IT professionals have to coordinate if we all work together, all right, and get their organization compliant. Now, GDPR went into effect on the 25th May, 2018, okay? That's why I produced this program for you to get educated, to get enlightened, all right? Like I said, I'm not a lawyer. You wanna know more? Talk to your lawyer, okay? So, we're gonna define a few terms. For example, in the previous video, they just explained what an identity is, okay? What exactly is a natural person, okay? A natural person can be a living person, identified directly or indirectly, all right? Now, if a living person is identified directly, of course, the name of the person comes, you know, into focus, you know, some personal details like address, okay, where the person lives, you know, that is uh, basically a direct reference to that person. But with GDPR, there's also the indirect identification of a person. <laughs> like, for example, if you're a website developer and you've implemented cookies into your website, so that the cookie can just give you an idea of, you know, you know, who visits your website, you know, where they're from, and just a few things which could help you in marketing. <laughs> you have to ask that person who comes to that website whether they really want those cookies to start running in their computer. One thing about um, 
some of these website developers is that because they know that there is GDPR, they don't want to keep information themselves. They want the information to be kept in people's browsers, all right? So that they just access it when those people, you know, um, uh, visit their website, okay? Now, website uh, browser um, uh, developers have also uh, come to an understanding that they need to be GDPR compliant. So it's possible now to just, in your browser, to just delete everything, okay? You can delete your history, your entire history. You see what I'm saying? So that nothing stays in that browser. No cookies start to run anyhow in your browser. Now that is something which you could do as a user of the internet, okay? Okay, now uh, the indirect reference of a natural person could be, you know, cookies, it could be uh, your IP address, all right? It could be uh, any indirect way of um, referring to you, you know, even your song. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? That's your identity. There's your voice there, all right? So that's a natural person. Now, what is personal data? Any information related to a natural person is personal data, okay? Now, um, what is processing, okay? Processing, any operation performed on personal data is regarded as processing, whether or not by automated means, all right? Or if it could just be, you know, recording someone, that's data processing, okay? Profiling, marketers. Marketers love profiling people. We have a customer relationship management system, so uh, we could just keep information because, you know, we need to know our leads, once our leads, you know, turn into prospects and before our leads turn into, I mean, from prospects, they become clients. We need to keep all that data. Not anymore. You don't just keep that data. You need to tell that person that we are keeping your data in our customer relationship management system because we, we, we would want to market your products so that one day you can become our client. You have to tell the data subject. You can't just do it anyhow anymore. All right, I've implemented customer relationship management systems um, for some companies, all right? And uh, they're not GDPR compliant. But now they need to be, okay? You can't just collect data, okay? Even if somebody just gives you a business card, it doesn't mean you should do whatever you want with that business card. The data. Before you process the data, you have to tell them, this is what we are going to do with that data, okay? Now, um, who is a data controller? A data controller is simply the entity that determines the purposes, the conditions, and the means of processing okay, of personal data. That's a data controller. He's more or less the person who is on in authority, okay, who will say, okay, this data that we have, um, we are going to send it to this accounting firm, okay? This accounting firm is going to hold data about this client because they'll know that, oh, uh, this client did business with us with so much, all right, or we bought this from this person, you understand what I'm saying? Meaning that even accounting firms need to be general data protection regulation compliant. Yes, this is serious, even accounting firms, all right? I know I've not heard anyone really say, get loud about GDPR, either from um, the accounting regulatory body or from our local information technology regulatory body, but believe me, one day someone will be found wanting, okay? And one of the greatest fears that I've got about general data protection regulation is that hackers may just target you and hack you, okay? Once they hack you, they'll be like, ah, oh, okay, now that we have data, okay? They could decide to do, you know, to some sort of um, blackmail on you, okay? They may just tell you, you've been hacked and they'll give you a little bit of the information that they collected about you, and then they can tell you, you have to pay them 100,000 United States dollars. If you don't want that information disclosed, 
And if, should you say, no, you don't want to pay? They will disclose that information. And the moment the data subject knows that the information is on the internet, what's going to happen? They're going to complain to their local European Union authority. And that European Union authority is going to come to Zambia and say, but you are keeping information on European Union citizens. Weren't you supposed to look after it? How secure were you keeping that information? Should they find that you are not even keeping it securely? They'll charge you the maximum penalty, 20 million euros. OK? And once you're charged 20 million euros, are you going to still be in business? That's why this program, the digital economy and innovation on Prime TV, is here to just assist you, shed some light, help you see. All right. Now, um, the data processor. Who is the data processor? It's simply someone who processes your data. OK? Like I gave an example, like an accounting firm processes data. The marketing department processes data. OK? Whichever process in your organization carries out processing of data, it is processing the data. OK? Now, um, let me just explain also the rights, all right? Then we're going to go into the next video, all right? Now, uh, the rights of the data subjects are the following. One, they've got the right to portability. What does it mean? It means that any data subject, anyone who you keep information about, okay, has the right to tell you, look, I want all the information sent to me. And you're supposed to do it within one month, OK? And you're supposed to make it easy for them to read that information, meaning you can't send it by spreadsheet. Instead, you send it by comma separated value, all right? CSV, OK? And it should be sent to them in a very easy to read format, which is interchangeable between different technologies and applications, all right? Meaning that if you are, for example, a social media um, site, website, you're supposed to send them that data. If they want to take that data to another social media website, they have the right to do that. That's what it means, the right of portability. So if you are a website programmer, you have to know that. The moment someone goes and creates a profile on your platform, that information they're giving you, you have to make it portable, all right? Because should they be from the European Union and they ask you, we want this data sent to us, you should be able to do that. There's nothing like, no, the technology that I'm using is complicated, I can't do that. No, it means they're not GDPR compliant. And you are not supposed to have information on EU citizens in the first place. $20 million, <laughs> maximum, 20 million euros, maximum fine, all right? So let's be compliant, okay? I know it's hard, but we can start from somewhere. And I believe that even people who say they are born again, they are not really born again, okay? And they just said, I'm gonna start checking myself. Everything that I do, I'm gonna be checking it, all right? From now onwards. It doesn't mean they've changed, but they've said they're gonna do everything they can do to change. All right? Same with us. We can slowly, well, not really slowly, we can be effectively, all right, be compliant, meaning we have to start taking steps. All right? Now, um, the other right is the right to um, ratification, meaning if somebody says, look, this data you have on me is not correct, you should be able to correct it. The other right is the right of erasure. Should they say, look, uh, what information do you have about me? And you say, we have this and this and this about you. And they say, no, 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 no. Delete it. You're supposed to delete it. OK? Profiling, the right to profiling and fairness. OK? You should tell them, you are now being profiled. OK? Especially online. You have to tell someone, you are now being profiled. OK? Uh, restrict processing, they have the right to restrict processing, meaning they can tell you, the tour operator, that, look, we are coming to visit Zambia, okay, 
But this information we're giving you, you should never give it to anyone else because they could come here to Zambia, see the Victoria Falls, and then somebody will tell them that, oh, actually there is even a volcanic crater just in DR Congo. There's a very interesting volcanic crater there, which is also a tourist attraction. Uh, um, another tour agent in uh, uh, DR Congo would want you know, their information so that they can advertise to them about this volcanic crater that they could see after seeing the Victoria Falls. Then you're supposed to let them know that, okay? You're supposed to let them know that beforehand, okay? Because they do have the right to restrict processing. And once they restrict processing, only what they have allowed, only the processing they have allowed should take place. Nothing else, nothing more, okay? They have the right to object to processing, meaning you can easily tell someone that, look, don't process this deal. Simple as that. You see what I'm saying? They have the right to information privacy, okay? Now, meaning that how you keep data is very important. You need to carry out effective risk management. If, for example, you are downloading your emails from, I don't know, whichever web server you download from, okay? And you are not using, you know, an encrypted uh, transport technology. It means that someone could, could eavesdrop on you and you read your emails. You see what I'm saying? Now, once they eavesdrop on you and they read the emails and they find something which they want, okay, and they decide to take it, and the owner of the email happens to be someone from the European Union and they find out, then you'll be in trouble. You see what I'm saying? So effective risk management is very important. Today, every company basically needs to carry out effective risk management, okay? Effective information technology risk management. It's not a joke anymore. Um, those were the rights, okay, that the data subjects in the European Union have. And you should never be found infringing their rights as a Zambian company, okay? Like I said before, hackers will be on you. Once the hackers get hold of information that you've got, they will expose you. You see what I'm saying? Now that is a very big threat that we have today. Because the threat of hackers getting hold of the information, or even just your inside threats, the people who work for you. If you haven't correctly defined who should access what data, and someone who's unauthorized gets hold of some sensitive data, if that sensitive data is regarding a European Union company or a European Union citizen, and they pull it out somewhere, and the owners that they are subject know about it, you could be in a lot of trouble. You could be in really a lot of trouble that could lead you to actually pay a maximum fee of 20 million euros, all right? For now, we don't have much time. I need to wrap up right now, okay? So, now, data processing under the general data um, protection regulation means even just collecting information is data processing, even the use of data. The storage of data, all that is processing, okay? How many organizations in Zambia are doing that to citizens of the, United, uh, of the European Union? There are many. There are many. If you are a school, an international school, if you are an NGO, a hotel, a tour operator, an importer, or even just a garage, <laughs> and you fix cars, okay, of the citizens of the European Union, you need to be general data protection regulation compliant, okay? You need to hire an IT security expert to come and assess you, all right? And tell you if you are compliant or not. You need to hire a lawyer to come and explain exactly what this compliance means and what could happen if you are not compliant, all right? Now, this is a very big topic and uh, I'm actually preparing a day's event for it, okay? I will let you know in due course, okay? The day and uh, the date as well as the premises where this event will be at. Uh, there will be a charge, of course I'll be charging because it will be a day's event where I'll explain everything, including the actual practice of being compliant because I can't say much. This is only a 40 minutes program and we've gone beyond it. So I have to end right now.
okay? If you have any more questions, you can WhatsApp me, you can, um, you can SMS me, okay? And uh, you can follow this up yourself, you can ask your lawyer, and uh, you wanna know uh, uh, anything that, for example, uh, our regulator can tell you, please, you can contact Zikta, and you can contact basically the people who can help you. The important thing is that if you hold data of European citizens, you hold data, okay, from European companies, okay, you need to be general data protection regulation compliant, okay? My job was just to shed some light, make you know, because Prime TV cares about you. It really does, all right? That's why they dedicated this time just to help you. I'm here to help you too. From now, uh, I've, run out, I've run out of time. I have to end the program now. So you have a very wonderful weekend and stay blessed, okay? Don't forget to go to church on Sunday or if you go to the mosque, go to the mosque on Friday, okay? If you are Hindu, go to the Hindu temple on Monday, okay? I wish you um, good health, everyone, okay? So take care, bye.